Hey guys, it's Nicholas here. Now recently on this channel, just as I said we would, we've been focusing a lot more on the financial news and things that would generally fall into the category of being fundamental analysis. And so because of that, I've been getting a lot more questions about my trading. People asking things like what role fundamental analysis plays in my trading, how I do my fundamental analysis, how I combine it with my technical analysis, which one I give more importance to, and so on. And so in this video, I don't want it to be like a structured lesson, but I want to have a bit of a discussion where I can give you an overview of how I approach my trading and how fundamental analysis slots into that. And that way, if there are any ideas there that you find interesting that you resonate with, you can go and take those for your own trading and any that you don't quite get or you think are crap, you could just ignore, so it's fine. Now, I'm not going to focus too much on the technical analysis because we've spoken about that before on this channel. And if you are interested in understanding how I trade with technical analysis using the Duomo method, then there's a link in the description box for our free training and that's the best place to start. And if you are already one of our members, then I actually did a webinar about this whole topic back in August that was a lot longer and a lot more detailed and it's still available in the members area. So if you are trading with the Duomo method, then check that one out. It's going to be more specific for you. So I guess the best place to start is if I give you an overview of how I approach my trading. Now, generally speaking, there are four stages that I go through, um, like quite broad stages. So the first one at the top is the market selection stage. So these are the steps that I go through to choose a market to focus on that helps me to find a market that meets the right sort of criteria that's going to give me the highest quality trades. So it's going to give me a, a trade that really matches what I know is going to help me to succeed with it. Once I have that market, I then move into an analysis stage. Now there is a form of analysis obviously involved in the market selection stage, but at the analysis stage, this is where I really start to dig in. And I actually break this down into two separate stages. The first one is about breaking down the market to understand what has happened so far and to interpret the current situation and then once I know that, it's almost like I move into the next stage where I'm then trying to anticipate all of the next potential outcomes that could happen. So I'm not looking at a market and saying, I think this is going to happen next. I'm looking at this point to say, okay, these are all the things that could happen next. And I kind of get a gauge of the probability of any of them happening and what the risk of return could be if that plays out. So that then moves me into the fourth and final stage where it's about execution, where if any of those outcomes are viable or even more than one of them, then I can trade those outcomes. So it's about opening the trade, managing the trade so I balance the risk with scaling in, scaling out and so on, moving my stop loss if I need to, and then ultimately exiting the trade, hopefully at a profit, but the losses happen as well. So it's okay, it's over the long term, the profitable trades overshadow the losing trades. And so the fundamental analysis slots into that process at various stages. So in those four stages, the fundamental analysis can play a role in any of those in a number of different ways. It can either be as what I refer to as a negative filter. I've spoken to you about that on this channel before. Um, it could be to give me directional bias or it could be the actual opportunity itself. So I'm going to try and explain those three categories and explain how each of those slots into the process of me breaking down a trading opportunity. So let's start with the negative filter. So a negative filter for me is something, whether it's an indicator or fundamentals or just a gut feeling that either stops me from entering a trade or causes me to reduce the risk that I'm going to have on a trade. So let's say that I want to open with 1% at risk, then there might be a negative filter that shows me something's not quite right and therefore it's going to be 0.5 at risk or something like that instead. So my fundamental analysis can act as a negative filter, usually in either the market selection stage or the execution stage. So either the first or the final stage, execution being the sort of trade management, opening the trade and so on. So if it's in the market selection stage, this is because through my fundamental analysis, I've identified that a market could be particularly volatile at that time, have more uncertainty than usual, just be generally too risky that I don't want to be trading it. 
in a way that I don't have a clear idea of what direction that market could be going in. So for example, maybe there's some political event happening and I don't have a clear idea of what the outcome's going to be. Maybe there's some sort of risk event that's causing more volatility. Maybe there's a natural disaster that's happened. You know, throughout a lot of the Brexit process, there was a lot of uncertainty where a lot of the discussions were happening behind closed doors and we weren't sure whether it was going to be positive or negative. So I might have avoided certain markets at that time. Now, it's not because those markets are so dangerous that I wouldn't touch them with the barge pole, but because when I'm looking at the markets, I know that if a market is particularly tricky at that point in time, there's no point me putting in extra effort to try and figure it out if there's an easier market that I can be trading. So it might be that there's a negative filter that tells me, don't trade that market, there's more uncertainty, and therefore you're going to get lower quality trades than you can get elsewhere. Now at the execution stage, the opening the trade, managing the trade, exiting the trade, the way that my fundamentals will play a role as a negative filter here will be if there's economic data release coming out. So let's say that I'm about to open a trade on pound dollar, for example, and I know that UK GDP is about to come out. Then I might either not open the trade because it's going to get disrupted soon by an economic data release that could be anything, there's some uncertainty there, or it might just cause me to reduce my position size or change the way that I'm approaching my risk management with that particular trade. So what I need to do for that stage is to be checking the economic calendar throughout the day so that I know when big major economic releases are coming out, or if there are unscheduled releases, I need to keep my eye on what's happening in the news. And for up here with the market selection, I need to be reading the financial news every day. I don't necessarily need to break things down in a way that I have a view on what's going to happen, but I at least need to be aware of where there might be disruptive events happening, okay? So for example, with trade tariffs, that was very disruptive for particular markets, that might have been a negative filter if I didn't have a clear idea of what I expected to happen. Now, this category, I think, is the one that is going to be most useful for beginner traders, because if you're, for example, already learning technical analysis, there's already a lot to learn there, that if you're trying to learn that while learning fundamental analysis, it could be a bit overwhelming. So instead, at least if you just have your fundamentals as a negative filter, all you need to do is be checking the news and checking the economic calendar, and all it is is like an extra risk measure to keep you away from uncertainty, volatility, and extra risk beyond what you already are expecting. Okay, so let's talk about the category where my fundamental analysis is giving me a directional bias. Now, this can affect things at any of the stages of the process, but we'll start with the market selection. So it might be that from my fundamental analysis, when I've broken things down, it's given me enough for directional bias that actually I think there's maybe an opportunity here. So I'm going to keep observing the market until maybe there's a suitable trade in that particular direction. So for example, this week I've been focusing on pound dollar because I think that there could be some long opportunities depending on what happens. So if I get the right situation, then I'll be going for that particular trade. I will be ruling out short trades. Or if you think about then the analysis stage, maybe I've chosen the market because in a, from the technical point of view, it seems like it's in a good price area. Like for example, quite recently with US dollar franc, it was heading back down towards an area where it struggled with many times in the past. I can't remember exactly the price level off the top of my head, but that was already part of the market selection based on the technical analysis. Then when I got to the actual analysis stage where I'm understanding what's happened, I'm interpreting it and planning the different outcomes, when I'm looking at the probabilities of those outcomes, I'm keeping in mind the fundamental analysis and the fact that even in the US Treasury's own words, the Swiss National Bank are currency manipulators. Now I wouldn't go to that extreme, but they can definitely intervene at certain prices and it was already getting down to an area where they were obviously not comfortable. So when I'm looking at the probabilities of what the outcomes, like what outcomes going to happen, I'm putting a higher probability on there being some sort of intervention that pushes the prices up. So that's influencing how I'm analyzing that market. And when it comes to the point where I'm then executing the trades, my fundamental analysis is making me approach my trade management in a particular way that may be giving more room for the price to move to the downside because I see that the upside could potentially be very big considering the fundamentals that I've seen. 
Now, so far with my examples, I've talked about currencies, but the same applies for any market. We could be talking about individual equities, uh, entire industries, the stock index, commodities, bonds, it doesn't matter. I have the same approach for each of the markets. And in fact, I don't count myself as a Forex trader. I know a lot of people say, hey, I'm a Forex trader. I just count myself as a trader. I go where the opportunities are. So if from my fundamental analysis, I have a particular, let's say, sentiment about a market. Like, let's say that I think like I'm bearish in a particular market. It might not be that I think the price is going to drop right now. It might not be for another month or two, but what I'm going to do is avoid being like on the long side at that time in that market and be looking for potential positions that I can take like based on my technical analysis, knowing that I have this view that I think that things are going to fall soon, that the price is going to drop, that it's going to be a bearish move. So that's going to influence the direction of the moves that I'm going in. It might also be that there's more risk in one direction. Like I've always held this thing that I don't like to go short on gold because I feel like I never know when something could suddenly happen that causes gold to shoot up and I'd rather not be on the short side. So even if I see opportunities to go short where you could potentially you know, make some money there, I'm going to choose not to. My fundamental analysis is giving me a directional bias that I don't want to go short. Doesn't mean that I want to go long, just means that I don't want to go short. So let's move on to that third category where the fundamental analysis is actually showing me there's an opportunity somewhere itself. So it's not that there's a directional bias, it's not that it's a negative filter, but actually I know I need to go long or short right now in this particular market. Now, there's actually a few different situations for this one. There's sort of a standard situation where I'm just doing analysis on a market or an asset or an industry, and I think, oh, actually, it's overall undervalued right now, or there's some sort of opportunity there, and I might trade that. Or there's two other situations that are under the umbrella of what I refer to as special opportunities, where there's some sort of special thing happening that's like a one-off and I want to focus on it. Now there's one where it's going to affect one market and I just want to be entering into that market for a big move in one direction or the other. Like for example, with an election, I might want to trade the stock index in one direction or the other. I just want to catch that big move. And there's one where there's a situational thing happening that's going to be affecting lots of different markets and I'm going to be planning more of a portfolio approach around that. So for example, my favorite times of this one has been uh, when we had the US fiscal cliff situation, I think it was back in 2013. That was when it was Obama's administration. And for that one, we actually set up a project team. So we were looking at the areas of healthcare and defense as well as the overall stock market. And so we hired we, into this little team that we had together two people that were from healthcare, we had two consultants that were helping us with the defense side, and we really broke down where there will be opportunities. So rather than looking at a whole industry, we were actually looking at supply chains and seeing where the weak links were that were really going to be impacted. Because of course, defense companies and healthcare companies, they're massive, or a lot of them are massive. And maybe um, something that, like some situation with the fiscal cliff or something that's going to impact them, might only be hitting one part of a big, huge company. Instead, there might be smaller companies that if there are going to be cuts in budget somewhere, they're going to be absolutely destroyed and they'll have no business. So we went through this whole project of like trying to build a small portfolio around these opportunities so we're exposed to exactly where we want to be exposed to. Not an overall market, but exactly where those weak spots are, the hot spots, pressure points. So those are the different approaches that I have. So with all of these, like let's say for example, the election, because we've had that recently, I might know that I want to go long or short after something happens. So that will be the market selection and past the analysis stage. But I know that if I can do my technical analysis, I can get an extra edge by finding the right time to enter. So my technical analysis at that time becomes more about timing the entry. Not to confirm whether I should enter or not, but timing it. Because the better my timing is, the tighter my stop loss is or where I'm going to exit the trade, therefore the higher the position size can be and therefore overall the greater the risk return is going to be in my favor. So if I can time the trade rather than just jumping in as soon as I know there's an opportunity, it's going to be much better. Because if I break down my analysis and I say, okay, right now is a long opportunity and this asset is going to fly and I just jump in straight away, maybe it fluctuates around a few percent either way. And if I had just timed it, that when it sort of drops down, or I, I knew the right time to enter that, that's the critical point that is going to move heavily, then I could reduce my risk and therefore the overall return is going to be much better on a risk adjusted basis. 
So generally speaking, I said it, it's not going to be exactly structured, but just an overall discussion of how I approach things. That's how I approach it. So my bread and butter day-to-day -day trading is focused on technical analysis. And so the fundamentals will either help me choose a market because I've got a directional bias, or mainly it'll be a negative filter for me. It will help me to reduce my position sizes or don't enter at the wrong times or exit trades when I know that it's going to be something disruptive. Because I don't want to trade when there's herd activity, we want to trade steady state markets. But that brings me like a range of returns each month. Sometimes there'll be a huge month, but generally it's within a range of certain returns that I get on a consistent basis. Whereas when we get these special opportunities, when I can really sort of dig into a market, I, I know there's going to be a big move happening, then that's when you can start to scale in heavy into a position. You can use different derivatives to try and maximize uh, the risk return that you're going to get. And that's when things get really exciting because that's when you can achieve much bigger returns than you do on your usual trading because you've really broken down a market and combined everything together. So there you have a real big edge. So just as a short high level overview, that's pretty much it. Now, as I said at the start, if you're just learning, say, technical analysis, then don't get too involved in fundamental analysis for now because you're just going to confuse yourself. You're going to have too many conflicting factors that you won't know what to do. You'll get paralysis by analysis. But I do recommend checking out the financial news, checking out the economic calendar, so you know as a negative filter when you should be more cautious about your trading. And then from doing that, you can start to understand, ah, okay, so this economic data moved the market this much, and why did it move this market? What was behind that? And you start to build up this sort of, like call it a lattice work of like where different markets are affected by different things and build up your base of knowledge, build up your experience, so you can start to have that directional bias where you're going to be able to pick markets and pick opportunities because of what you're seeing with your fundamental analysis. And then ultimately those bigger opportunities and the special opportunity situations, which are really fun. And in fact, if you wanna see how we broke down one of the markets in one of those special opportunity situations, it's actually quite relevant still. It was exactly this time last year, we released a video about the hog apocalypse when there was a virus being spread around pigs around the world, um, especially in China. And that was before coronavirus or anything existed and we, we were looking at that. And that's one of those situations where then you look at the companies involved, the industries, the different derivatives that you can sort of get access to. So check that video out. Like I said at the start, if you want to know how I trade with technical analysis using the Dwyer method, then check out the free training that's in the description. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. There are other videos on this channel about how I organize my fundamental analysis because it's really important to stay on top of your information that you're collecting and your research and your work and your viewpoints and so on. So you can find those in this channel as well. And if you have any suggestions for things that you'd like me to cover in future videos, not the financial news stuff, but this sort of thing, explaining about how I trade, let me know in the comments. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this one, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care, guys.